Hey everybody, this is Dave from TechDraw. I'm here on the beautiful campus of Emory University for the Knowledge Futures Conference. But I'm Vivek Wada, I'm a visiting scholar at Berkeley and I'm a researcher at Duke University and Harvard. We're talking about the future of education. You know, look at how the world has changed. That uh, every child right now uses Twitter to communicate, right? Not every child, I'm exaggerating, but you know, children use Twitter, Facebook, and so on. Professors don't know anything about it, right? So for the first time in history, you have the students who are more adept with what's happening in the world than the professors are. What does this mean for education? I mean, how does it keep? How do we? How do you keep pace? How does the uh, academic world react? I heard somebody in the room say, does it really matter that two people read an email PDF and agreed versus uh, exactly. a crowd of a thousand saying that it was relevant? Every time I write a TechCrunch post or a Business Week article, I get feedback from hundreds of people, sometimes thousands of people. Okay? That feedback is more timely, more relevant, and, and is, is more helpful than the entire feedback you get through a peer review process when you have two academics sitting in the ivory towers trying to tell you what's wrong with your stuff. You also have a bunch of uh, experience and a bunch of knowledge on talking about startup ecosystems and you've you've talked at length about Silicon Valley and how it was made and I know you've got some work coming out here next week. After having been in Silicon Valley for the last few months, I've seen the difference between this world and that world. The reason why they're in the West Coast is because that's where the innovation is happening, that's where the ideas are happening. And there's a big difference between venture capitalists in, in uh, California and venture capitalists here in Atlanta. Here, uh, they look for successes. In Silicon Valley, they look for failures. Failure is a badge of honor. Every entrepreneur you meet, you ask them you know, to tell you about that. They, they talk about how many companies they've screwed up, <laughs> how many failures they've had. Right? That's a big change in mindset. Right. I wrote an article about the difference between 128, Route 128, which is Boston, and Silicon Valley 30 years ago. You wouldn't say use Silicon Valley without saying, you know, it would always be Silicon Valley 128, 128 Silicon Valley, they were synonymous. Today, I'll bet you nearly everyone watching this video has no clue what Route 128 is because Silicon Valley left Route 128 in the dust. So Silicon Valley is going to leave 128 in the dust. What do you think is going to happen to Atlanta or to uh, RTP? You know, further back in the dust. The difference is the risk of, of, of um, um, sorry, the culture of risk taking, the openness, you, there you get together at Pete's coffee house, at, at Pete's tea and coffee, and you exchange ideas. Everyone is open with everyone else. There's a free, free flow of information. Um, it's, you know, people have a total different, risk is tolerated, um, failure is tolerated. You know, it's just a total different mindset than there is over here. And even, like I said, even with the venture capitalists, the fact that you invest in failure versus investing in success is a huge, huge difference. And that's why Silicon Valley rules the world. As we look at the places that are trying to figure out how to get in this. Obviously there's, you know, city and state governments who are, you know, would love to have these businesses there. There are smart people kind of everywhere. We've got them at Georgia Tech or Duke or all these other places that don't necessarily have the underpinnings to be the Silicon Valley. Dave, it's all about people. Regional planners think that they can build these incubators, sorry, build these clusters that they can create science parks and the magic will happen. Every region wants to, you know, be a Silicon Valley, so they build a science park which is gonna be the next Silicon Valley they all fail. Because the reason is, what makes uh, entrepreneurship click is the people. What makes, a, a, tech, what makes a, a tech region is the people, basically. Silicon Valley's magic is it's one giant network where people collaborate, they interchange information and ideas, and they help each other, and so on. That doesn't happen anywhere else in the world. Okay? So if, if the Southeast wants to become a tech center, what it needs to do is not to create a tech park. It needs to create a culture of openness, entrepreneurship. You know, for example, at, uh, at Georgia Tech, at Emory, they should have more courses in entrepreneurship. When students graduate, give them an easy way of starting companies, give, provide incubation space, provide mentorship, and so on. <laughs> What's more, I would import entrepreneurs from Silicon Valley. You know, <laughs> one of Boulder's biggest asset is Brad Feld, a venture capitalist who moved there from Boston. We need to get a dozen Brad Felds to move from Silicon Valley to over here to run these incubators, to teach students how to, how to be risk-taking, and then to provide the motivation for them to stay in this area. You have a few hundred entrepreneurs doing that, and if five or ten years later you'll have the next generation, and they'll start here. This become will become area will become a tech center. It won't happen by creating some buildings and creating some mammoth real estate projects. <laughs> It'll happen by getting the right people over here and, and bringing immigrants here. Because in Silicon Valley, one of the magic, uh, one of the things that happens is fifty-two percent of startups in Silicon Valley are born by people who look like me, who talk like me, who have funny accents, um, and who are foreign-born. Okay, that's the magic in Silicon Valley. We need to get them here as well. So I'm not saying you bring all the immigrants here. I'm saying have a mix of immigrants from all over the world 
and have locals and have you know and have Silicon Valley types and just create such a desirable place to be that no one wants to leave. If the problem for engineering schools here is as soon as they achieve some level of success, they head south. They head uh, to the west. I mean, uh, Silicon Valley is a mecca for the be world's best techies. Mm -hmm. You want them staying here, and that's what you know regions have to figure out is how do you get those brilliant people who get education in their universities to start companies locally and how do you attract other successful people to come back and stay there.